All right, so today we're gonna to talk about the combination sander, okay? We mostly just use the combination sander where other sanders, just where it's most suited to use this. Obviously, sometimes we'll sand corners on a top. Um, if we need to sand, you know, some edges, if we're trying to duplicate items a lot on shape, we will use this. A lot of times when we're sanding curves, you know, we'll use the curve out here. Okay, so as with any machine, always wear safety glasses, always tie up long hair, get rid of loose jewelry, hoodie strings, baggy sleeves, things like that. Okay. So the combination sander has two different sanding services. Okay. It's a combination of this one has a nine inch disc, right? This has a six inch wide by 36 inch belt. Okay. A couple things here. There's a tensioner. I'm going to take this belt off. All right. And if you see in here, you can see maybe those direction arrows on there. Those have to go in the direction of the rotation of the machine. Otherwise, you'll have a failure where this belt is spliced together with a glue joint, with a high heat glue joint. A belt is gonna fail when you get it to the temperature that that glue beyond the capabilities of that glue. When you get that glue joint too hot, the splice joint is right here, it'll come apart. Or you'll gouge it and you're, you'll start to tear off strips and things like that. The main thing you need to keep in mind here is that when you turn on the switch, you're turning on this and this. If you're using the disc sander, this is not like your work table to put things on. That's not gonna work out too well. All right? So we've got off on switch down here, all right, on the disc sander, and that's an adhesive backed disc right there. We've got the table, which not always, but almost always is set up at a 90 degree angle to the disc. And the clearance between, we always want to keep this less than an eighth inch. We want to keep that very minimum. We don't want it big enough to pull anything down in it, all right? The belt itself, this is the tensioner. Don't try to adjust it. Um, I just spent probably 10 minutes or more trying to get that thing adjusted so this thing would spin right. Overall, I've been pretty disappointed uh, in this machine quality. So we do have a, a stop or a fence on the belt sander, and that gives us something that we can put a board up against as we sand it, all right? The other thing is, if we've got it set up to a 90 degree angle with the belt, then that means we can use it kind of as a fence and assure that we are, in case we wanna you know, sand a surface uh, that is 90 degrees adjacent to another surface, all right? So, The thing with this machine is there's a lot of stuff turning out here. You really got to watch your fingers. You know, I've had kids' fingers get a little bit burnt, you know, just not paying attention to what they're doing. Always try to maintain a two inch safety margin between your fingers and the abrasive surface. All right. You always kind of have to pay attention to your surroundings when you're using this. All right. Now, so you're much safer if you're, if you're using this stock. All right, if you're using the belt portion of the sander. Over here on the disc, you only want to sand between the center and the left side or the downward stroke of the disc. If I try to sand over here where the disc is coming up out of the table, it's going to constantly lift my piece up off the work table, not a safe situation. I only want it, you're using the entire abrasive, but I only want to sand between the center and the left edge and the closer i get to the center if i travel over center it'll start to pick it up off the table and it'll do it fairly quickly all right so i'm just going to show you 
a little bit, you know, how I might uh, sand with this sander. Okay. Here's a little uh, door stop that we made, and it's pretty rough, pretty rough surface here. You can see that. And so I can use this, okay, to put this up against the fence, okay. To smooth that, okay. Not done, but and it removes wood fairly quickly. All right. Now, if I were to, you know, want to round a corner, I may want to do it here on the disc sander. Put you in a little different angle here. Okay. You don't want to press very hard. Always stay left of center. Always keep it moving using a different area of the disc so you don't burn it. None of these abrasives are cheap. But usually a lack of understanding or a lack of patience is what will burn an abrasive. Okay? So you can see here that we just rounded that corner nice and smooth. We would want to follow that up, you know, with a finish standard with a higher grit. Okay? So this thing is more about getting things to shape and removing large amounts of wood prior to using the finish standard.